Oh, my fellow makers, Adam here from Tested. And careful viewers might know that I'm working on a Ghostbusters pack because that's what this is. But it's not just any Ghostbusters proton pack. No, 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 no. I'm working on a super crazy custom specific Ghostbusters pack in conjunction with the new Ghostbusters film. And when Jason was writing the script, he consulted with me and asked me if Egon had kept on using his pack and modifying it, what might it look like? And aesthetically, that is my kind of challenge. And so even though the production designer and the production team came up with the answers to these questions for the new movie, I am also going to answer them for myself. So I am doing a personal custom one day build of Egon Spengler's original pack but within the context of the new movie, as if he had been using it and modifying it to keep it running in the intervening decades. Now, production went to incredible lengths to maintain a high fidelity to the original Ghostbuster props. I was super impressed with how assiduous they were, and I plan to be the same. So through my various channels of the people that I know, I have managed to source a pack shell that has a direct lineage to a screen used original. And the best part, I know I've already listed several things that are the best part, but the best part about this is that I'm not doing this build alone. I have incredible help to work with me on this. Prop maker and special effects artisan from the production, Ben Eady. Come in, my friend. Adam. You worked on the actual production, yes. managing 20 separate proton packs. It's all the little parts and the bumpers and the little details. I mean, there's so many details yes. on a proton pack alone. It must have been like a tile puzzle trying to figure out everything. Well, especially when you take into account there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different styles of packs. So Whoa. yeah, it, uh, it, they're all the same foundation, but it changes from scene to scene depending on what was going on. And some of them are so, so very cool. <laughs> okay, so when you're working, uh, presumably some of these packs are like exactly the same pack from the original film. Um, very close to, okay. of course, you know, you got to look at the, the timeline of the movie. This is going forward to 2020 or mm -hmm. 2019. Mm -hmm. And you got to look at what would have happened over that time period. Would there be, you know, improvements? Would there be modifications? Right. Would there be wear? So yeah, well, they're, they're, more, yeah. They're, they're worn. And I'll be completely honest, I probably didn't get the packs right, but I have time on my side saying, well, they made a modification. That's, that's why it's different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's multiple teams, multiple shops making hero packs, stunt packs in LA that they're sending up to you and then you're modifying from per, for production yes, needs. Is yes, right? we, and we were even creating some on the fly as needed. So there was like, yeah, I wouldn't say a script change, but there was some things that weren't ordered and everybody's like, oh no, what are we going to do? And it's like, well, let's build one. And having visited the set a little bit, it's pretty clear to me that Jason was right there on the front line, making sure that these things had a direct uh, 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 aesthetic lineage to the original. Pack. Yes, very much so. Like, you know, they, we had to make sure certain things were right. Like, you know, the wiring harness, mm -hmm. the original wiring harnesses came in. Well, that's 89. That's not what we wanted. We wanted the 84. And people are like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so then we're scrambling, trying to find these. And, you know, we got lucky. There was Eric Reich on, on set and he had a friend who had a friend. There was a lot of a friends who had friends and it all played out really well. Okay, so you guys modified some of the packs as if they had been uh, being used and kept up over the intervening decades. Yes. And I want to build a pack in that vein, but I am not gonna follow the production designer's dictum. I am gonna follow my own muse on this. I Can love you it. help? Uh, absolutely. Are you kidding me to build something where it's, it's not the show, but still has like maybe a little more of our flavor in it would be awesome. And I think everybody should have their own pack because it's a custom piece of equipment. All right, Ben, this is the key piece of uh, equipment that I'm adding to the Canon. Right. Uh, my feeling, like I said, was that there weren't enough lights on the front of the pack. And so this is a pack attenuator that would clip to your backpack strap on the Alice pack yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, because you need your right hand free and your right side free to grab the wand, I figured on the left side here with some switches, a light, I figured we'd do a bar graph there because Ghostbusters loves bar graphs. Yep. And then maybe a pot here, like if you overheat your pack, you can kind of turn it down a little bit from right here. Nice. So the first thing I want to talk about is making this box, right? So I want yeah. to machine some of these slots. I want to weld this together like right. the, the welded yep. uh, Ghostbusters look. Do you think we can do that? 
We can try. It's okay. been a while since I've been welding, so I'm, I'm, right. I'll have to crash course on it because it's going to be thinner metal. But for sure, we can definitely give that a try. That's one thing too is I, I like um, a lot of people look at this and go, "Well, it's you know, it's a metal case." No, it's it's plastic, and you can paint yeah. a lot of things. So don't ever get stuck in one material. I, I find myself doing this where you get sold on it. I got to yeah. make it out of aluminum. Two days later, you can't do it, and somebody comes up and goes, "Why didn't you make it out of plastic like this?" And you're like, <laughs> "Damn it!" <laughs> Um, it actually could be that we came up with a way to cut this out and tab it so that we could almost rivet it together. Oh, that would be, yeah, to, to flat know? pattern and rivet that because, would be no problem at all. Right, because all we'd need to do is uh, mill these slots on the mill uh, yeah. once we're, actually probably afterwards, because yeah. we could clamp it in. And, yeah. and I can use my CAD system to flat pattern that in a heartbeat. Oh, great. And that, that's, a, that's so easy for me, it's disgusting. I love that. Yeah. That's your first, uh, that's the first thing. That's fine. But, if you um, need to, go right ahead. You can see it's it's not held in by much. I'm thinking it yeah. it will hold it up here out nice. of the way. Okay. And I'm gonna I'll mess around with that. Sure, sure, sure. The thing about a build like this is within the Ghostbusters pack itself is already like this whole universe of stuff you have to get right. There are dozens of pieces. Each one is very specific to either Ghostbusters 1, Ghostbusters 2, etc. And the packs are different between Bankman and Spangler, etc. And then there's the added modifications that I'm making, like making the whole, this thing removable and how we get detail the inside of that so that it feels like it's part of the same universe. So it's two totally separate aesthetic tracks that have to meet together on this build. Amazing. It's amazing when a three eighths of an inch screw is too long. Okay, hold on. I got to think about something here. I just need to put on my thinking cap for a second. I just kind of... Really just ponder this for a second. Oh, perfect. That's white, that's flashing, that's red. Wait, one, two, three, four, five lights that we need to do. We Some could scab one onto the same circuit. Yeah. I made the switch. The question is, can I get it installed? Okay, this switch I'm making is actually one of the things I'm borrowing from the production's updated Spangler pack, which is in the elevator scene in Ghostbusters, when the three original Ghostbusters are with their packs on and about to visit Slimer for the first time, uh, I think it's Venkman turns on Spangler's pack from behind and he reaches to a specific location. I think that location is underneath this, the ion arm, and uh, so did Jason Reitman, and so he put a switch there, and I am also putting a master pack switch there. And I've made the switch, equivalent to the one in the film with a little bit of a nerdy on the end here. Uh, and I've made the switch hole where it goes. <laughs> now I'm having trouble fitting the switch into the switch hole because there's just not a lot of room in this thing. So it's going to take me a little bit of tile puzzling to get this going. <laughs> the no oh, 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 okay. All right, cool. There we go. Yep. Ah, ha -ha! I got it. There we go. Now I want to paint that red. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. No, that's uh, you. You're going through the exact issues we did, and we did like 
What we ended up having was this little laser cut piece of wood yeah. that fit like a U over top of it. We just wedged it in oh. and, and then uh, we had a couple other, like basically we just made that work in a couple tacks of glue, but I think there was an extra piece or two, but yeah. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna make a little wood wedgie here that holds that in, yeah. but I'll paint this and I'll run the leads out so it comes out and then I can install it and it's ready to go. Right, remember to, this is one thing we did is we installed a bunch of switches uh -huh. and then afterwards somebody went, okay, where are the wires so we can use it? Oh, and yeah. we're just like, <gasps> take it all <laughs> apart, <laughs> put the wires in. Classic move. You can actually, Shorten this by this distance. Okay. Okay. Make these feet a little longer. Okay. Because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drill a hole down and put a cap screw in there. So there's cap mm -hmm. screws in each one. It looks nice and okay. neat. Do you want these outer pieces to be thicker then so you have more material? Negative. These outer pieces are great. I am going to want to chamfer them on the, on the 3M disc okay the same way those copper ones are chamfered yeah. we're going to want to do it's it's not going to look as neat as theirs but it'll be close jen that's a terrific first pass awesome um i'm really pleased with that you got the kidney shape exactly right oh right and you're cutting these out in the middle yes. there yeah. um fabulous it's a teeny bit thicker yeah no i can tell that so let's go with um let's go with a piece of eighth inch okay and we'll just we'll go two quarters and one eighth Oh, okay. So yeah, got it. Right, because we're wrapping that, so it'll it won't be visible yeah. anyway. Awesome. Awesome. Great. That's a fabulous pass. Excellent. Caboose red or sky? Uh, yeah, caboose red. Yeah. I'm using lacquer paint. Very pleased. So these are the same batteries that we use for our remote control tank game. Yeah. I have a 3D printed clip that I designed that, oh. that literally it snaps into place and snaps out. I want that. This and, is the main power supply. Uh, I can bring it in. Okay. I can print one and bring it in tomorrow. Great. How many volts and? 12, 12. volts. 7,800 milliamp hours. Oh, lost more than two hours on this. Maybe <laughs> two days. <laughs> Can we swap the switch it, out for what is coming out of here? Probably. Uh, or we can just have this be hot to this and this. Oh, right. Swap the switch here so it's not. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking you undo the thing there to yeah. find out where it's soldered and put these pins on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if it's useful, also, there's a version of this that also has a five volt out USB. If you think that we would need that, we could swap um, it for one of those. The thing is, is the um, the LED lights, the whole, yeah. the, the cyclotron. That's the, all five that's volts. That's all five volt. Um, but we could throw a buck converter along the way too. Instead yeah, of having that's, modify. this that's is, the this is the other one. This has five volts out. Okay. So do you want it wired through the pack? Yes, I think I would like it wired to the okay. pack because getting a 12 volt battery in that thing okay. is a pain. Okay, cool. So we put a 12 volt here. Yeah. We do like a buck converter, just a little step down converter. Mm -hmm. And then the step down converter could be hooked onto this switch. Mm -hmm. That, that way we're works. not modifying anything there. That works perfect because the way this is designed, the main board goes in here mm -hmm. and that's where the power goes to. Oh, good. So yeah. we can just put the board where it's supposed to be, hook it to yeah. the battery. And then I think it supplies power and everything for everything else through the cat, the network cable that it came right. with. Yeah. Okay. So do you want this guy now we can bend this up and fold it, but we can also, it's easy to mount and do all your holes while it's flat before we bend it up. No, let's bend it up, fold it and rivet it. And then, then we'll add the holes. Cool. Um, and that little break under the table might be the strongest one for this heavy gauge. The little, oh, you got like a little... I have a little 12 inch break. I have two yeah. 12 inch breaks and one 24 inch. Right. Yes. Okay, cool. We only cool. have one piece of half inch, so and I'm so saving you're it until the, yeah. Good for you. <laughs> uh, um. And then the tab on this will just get shorter and the whole kidney will move towards the wall. Mm -hmm. And this tab will elongate just yep. a little bit. Early on in the discussions about this film, I told Jason I wanted to build one of the Hero Proton Packs. 
ultimately that doesn't quite work for one individual to do that because these props, there's never just one of them. They're in many cases, dozens, and they need to be supported by the people that built them because they require all these different power systems. And when things break on set, you need the people working on them, etc. It just didn't make any sense for me to make some one off that other people had to deal with all the headaches I created. So I was fine with that. But getting to do kind of my own design of this within the frame of my own brain and with this incredible help that we've got today, it's just like fantasy camp. There is a cool feature which I have added to my Proton Pack that I've never seen anyone do. And that is this little doodad here. This is called the Crank Generator. Now, almost all the verbiage I'm using to describe these parts were come up with by Ghostbusters fans in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. So this is called the Crank Generator. And the uh, little handle here is a Raytheon crank. Um, you might have used one on the power supply for your Lionel trains back in the day. Yeah, that was one of the places they showed up. At any rate, I made my crank generator an actual generator. So within the aesthetics of the pack, I'm adding brass screws and stuff here and there to look like it was cobbled back together. But these brass screws serve a purpose. They actually hold a generator I bought on eBay to the back. Yeah, it's real. There's another mod I'm about to make uh, that is different from the Canon packs, which is this piece right here. This is the ion arm assembly. This is often called the antenna. Um, I am actually going to make it look more like an antenna by adding some cross antenna pieces. Yeah, I, I like the idea of this looking a little more like the old TV style antenna of my childhood. Okay. Ah, uh, gonna dirty this up just a tad. You know, I wish I could make the ion arm shoot silly string. Next up, the booster tube. Yeah, okay. You don't know what that is? Okay, maybe you know what that is, but I'm making a mod to the booster tube that I'm super excited about. This, that is booster tube. That's the ladder frame. This is a booster tube and sits here, right here in the pack. Um, like I said, my biggest issue with the pack is I want more lights on it. So I'm adding some lights and I'm even adding a smoke effect. I'll show you in a minute. There's that, there's that, great. Now, and then this guy, oh my God. Space is gonna get to a premium quickly in here, guys. This is the hydrogen, what do you call it? HGA, hydrogen. Uh... That is a very good question. No, 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 I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. I have a master guide here. I have a master guide. Come on, where's my master guide? Here it is. Yep, no, that's not it. No, there it is. All right, HGA, hydrogen gas accumulator. Yes, this is the hydrogen gas accumulator. Um, I've gone with the Ghostbusters 1 version, and those you can tell because the, uh, the little uh, clippered brass fitting here sits not on the same plane as the Legree fitting, but slightly higher. One thing about Ghostbusters packs that every ghost head will tell you is that those mofos are heavy, and this is no exception. Actually, though, 
you're not seeing the full effect. I said that I'd added an effect to the booster tube and I have. My idea is that this would be some sort of cooling tower for when the, uh, the, 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 the amount of heat generated by the blast was too great. So I added some red lights in there, but you can't see them until you do this. There we go, so you see the red light? See that little glow? Watch this. Yeah, that's an overheating pack right there. Dude, look at that! <laughs> that is a vape pen smoke machine made by Spoon Makes, and it is running pure 100% vegetable glycerin through there. I love it. I'm very happy with how that works. Yeah. Fabulous. Blow it, blow it, would you? Uh, so main power. Oh, look at that! That was beautiful! Where's that bar graph? Uh, activate. Okay, great. With the that lights on, that's good. Capture. Beautiful. That's the push button. Yeah, and then blast. I'm not, I'm nice. not exactly sure what the difference is. But uh, who knows? Doesn't yeah. matter. That's but great. The hat lights on and everything. Actually, the, this looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It looks really good. And then I guess after you do it so long, the overheat light will come on. I've got to I've got to make some of these wires longer so that we have room to maneuver it. Oh, because the mechanism still has uh, to work. Yeah, so you, it'll be good. You it's going to mount over okay. here. Okay. Okay. And then and then we can We'll worry about that later. Work. Yeah. But I feel good that it's working and we should be you know. Dude, that's it. awesome. All right, cool. Fantastic. I'd like you to put right there. Thank you. Hold that. Don't let it move. Uh, no, I don't. Pr I don't prank. Ah, oh, these guys, and this guy, oh, and these guys, oh, and this guy. All right, we get all that going. Let's see here. No. So by now I have most of the original Canon pieces of the pack kind of roughly in place. It's not painted, it's not cohesive, but we're getting there. Uh, and in a few places I have added some extra brass screws as part of the, you know, maintenance of this machine. But now, because I've got most of this in place, I'm starting to really look aesthetically about making more additions of screws and plates and other evidence that parts of this were modularized, pulled off, rebuilt, and put back on. This might be some of the most fun part of this build.
Sean, yeah. have you ever seen old military equipment with the wire wraps yeah, done this way? I don't know how to do it. It's this. I'm doing it right now. Really? Yeah, the women that do it, they carry this little spool of twine in their hand and they can do it. There's footage of them you can find on YouTube. They can do it way faster than you can like zip tie sure. a wire harness together. I didn't it was that song. Yeah. Yep, and then and then these guys. I just happen to have a bunch. I remember reading that Andre Agassi, one of the big things about his evolution as a tennis player was when he started traveling full-time with a tennis stringer. Um, and you, this is your circle. So this oh, is yes. I see what you're saying. You're saying this is wider. Yes, I get that. It is totally cool with me if what we end up doing is um, we end up just making a chamfer that holds these in. Right? So here is, yeah. So the issue is... So the light comes here, but the lights are proud there, mm. right? Oh, I see what you're saying. So yeah. just the LED. Yeah, just the LED. Okay. And then if that turns out to be a gigantic problem because we hate the way it looks, what we can do is if you look at the outer thing here, so this is the outer curve and here is the LEDs. If we look at this and this right here, this area looks like shit, we can laser cut in styrene just a little fascia cover for the outside of that on the top. That's it. You're never gonna notice all the dressing around. You're just gonna go, ooh, blue glow. The stack up fits with the indentation for the inside. Yeah. Um, hey, Ben. Yeah. Will you come over and take a look? We got a, um, a situation here. So I have the stack up. We've got yeah. two 16 inch pieces on with a uh, okay. quarter inch in the middle. Yeah. That one's slightly indented. However, mm. the setup that you had before, the pixels were on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, because of that, we're short. That's okay. Four or five inches. What we do is we snip the end off this oh, and right. we just you you awesome. splice them together. Okay. Um, how do you guys feel about this stack up situation? So I feel it looks no, great. I think that's like, I wish I wish you were around when we were making these <laughs> it's things. It's going to look great. This is kind of my specialty. Um, okay, great. So in terms of finishing the this panel, does this need um, glue and then mm -hmm. scotch bright to the side? And I have right. a full thing of glue here. Sorry, I'm kind no, of no. stuck. To <laughs> it's okay. The one thing you might want to do is that this is going to light leak to the inside. So what we did is we took, uh, um, what do you call it? It's copper tape. It's just like you don't have the bleed out and you like, mm -hmm. they're really intense to start with and they, it, it dies so quickly. I think that I, so before we worry about the tape, we fog it up, we glue it, and scotch bright the shit out of it. And then we see how we are. So what I'm thinking we might want to do before we glue and scuff it is to actually eliminate the strip and uh -huh. see where the diffusion works best. Totally. Is it on the outside or is it maybe on the, the top of the middle sandwich piece? So okay. I think the whole, th uh, oh, the diffusion. Like, yeah, like so which, because typically when you, whatever surface is scuffed and then the edge will get the, the most of your light. I think it all gets scuffed. So every surface of all three. In the of all three stacks. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because no, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it has to be the ones that are unglued because once if you scuff the ones and then glue them, they'll go smooth. They'll go clear. Yeah. Mm. The glue will fill the gap between the two. So glue them together. Then we scuff all three visible surfaces. Got it. Okay. Um, and when you do that, you can use some copper tape to hold it all together so we can pop it behind here. I'd like to experiment with its distance from this because all that will give us different effects. Understood. <laughs> Doing stuff like this, half of me is dying, half of me is like, oh God, that looks awesome. Let's see here.
<laughs> Look at that. I'm really pleased with how that looks. I want to throw some electric sparks in here so occasionally one goes Um, I love that idea. I know the color scheme doesn't fit, but I kind of like that that old bone isolation <laughs> kind of feel like the, you know, the Transformers with the, oh, the, the with Melmac. So yeah, I think I want to gather them though. Okay. I think I want to gather them in two bins of, of three, right? Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to cheat it. And that allows me some room to mess with that third little thing. However, if, if we do that, mm -hmm. one thing I sort of request is that we hide that seam. Oh yeah. And that seam. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally, totally. But wait till you see what I'm going to do here. Let's see here. See what, okay, those two in there and then these yep, two. Yep, yep, I yeah, see, so see. something like that. Um, and then we pop some screws up from underneath and this whole thing becomes this lovely freestanding extra bit of awesome freaking detail oh yeah that's got a right especially if you light underneath that too yeah if you and if you get this like a, a silver or something like that it'll give you some really interesting blow reflections from the center mm-hmm Oh yeah, look at that. We're starting to look be really beautiful. That, I'm really digging this. Right. Okay, so these need to be silver because I can't see them. You could have this to start lighting it if you wanted. Okay. Um, I played around with what I want to do here. Um, I think I know the arrangement that I like. I'm going to take a picture of it so I can look at it tonight while I'm chilling and see what happens in my head. I removed two of those. I also think I'd put here, 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 here. I'm gonna have these sticking up and have wires coming out of them and like all routing to the same place, like whoosh, through a hole up there. Just for- Yeah, so it's like wire, 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 and it gets bigger, 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 and then disappears up there. Ah, I like that. Yeah, and I think it's gonna be this white cord and maybe a couple of other colors. These are actually radio tube caps. Huh. Yeah. Um, so will these get paint? As well? Yeah, these okay. will get painted. Um, those will get painted probably a dirty silver, is my thinking. This is now feeling like something to me. It looks amazing. Right? Yeah. So it's not even like you see more paint. I'm just making details show up. Yeah. This is the arrangement I like for these. I'm okay. going to use four of these Oh, I guys. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's cleaner. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Jen, I'm going to ask you to cut me an opaque, find some opaque acrylic that we've got. Okay. And I want to cut a ring in here that we can hide some lights underneath. Um, so I'm going to pull this mm -hmm. so we can take a so look. So you're thinking in the very bottom. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to put this over here. And you can wor work on lighting that. But what I'm thinking of, Jen, is a little, a little shelf. So whatever this idea uh -huh. is, a little shelf here that's about three quarters of an inch wide, and maybe press bits into there. And we can put lights on the I, inside of that and yeah, hide yeah. them. And we can do, in the same way you've got that beautiful orange green effect on the wall hanger, yeah, yeah. we do the same kind of thing in there. And we yeah. can, in it, because the thing is, because that ring will glow blue, any yellow and orange we add is just going to make the whole thing feel so awesome. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's going to make it feel so warm and inviting. So, yeah, let's look towards... It doesn't have to be opaque plastic. We can paint it if we okay. need to. But let's cut in a piece of eighth inch plastic, three quarters of an inch wide, that is that ID, that OD. Okay. 
and we're going to have it come over here and we'll hide some lights inside. Great. And you're thinking like what? Three quarters of an inch, half inch? Yeah, three quarters. Three quarters wide. <laughs> I seriously, I use it every day. I love it. All right. Oh my God, this is so much fun. We are uh, about 90 plus percent assembled, except for some stickers and some tubing. But now it's time for the final storytelling, the weathering that ties this all together uh, and helps tell the story of the film in which this pack continues to get used and modded and damaged and rusted and messed up for 30 years after the original Ghostbusters film. That's the kind of storytelling I'm going to imbue on this with some paint and some brass and some bits and bobs and specifically some rust. There too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And doink. I'm really pleased with this. Okay, so we've got most of, oh right, that guy goes in here. It comes all the way across. Oh right, okay, and so it's clearly a piece of something. So I'll use this stuff. Time for some stickers. I think I have everything I need. That's the gearbox. That's the end filter. That's the bumper. That's the top. That's the back. I got all those. That's the hydrogen gas accumulator. Uh, yeah, those are the goggles. I got those for later. Cool. I got a little bit of everything. Great. Great. Little isopropyl alcohol to let the paint wick. Hopefully my spritz bottle isn't broken. Let's see. So I have a philosophical question to answer here, which is, uh, I'm gonna do the rust first. Okay, so one of the key differences between this pack and the ones from the original film is that this one would be rusted. If Egon had kept it running, in his new home for several decades. Uh, there would be periods of time when it would lie fallow. Uh, it's a different environment than New York City. I'm just assuming if the outside is some sort of cast iron or, or cast metal like that, that there would be some rust. So I'm going to add some specific spots of rust. I think I'm gonna do one up here, and I think I'm gonna do some small spots around here and see how I like that. Um, Again, this is the idea is that it has rust damage from like being left in a specific spot where like water was dripping. This isn't just random little rusty spots. It's like I'm doing a couple of big rust spots and then I'm going to add in some more rust. Later on, I will tie this all together with a black wash and kind of add some of the, the, the accent colors that help tie it together. But first and foremost, the most difficult part, the rust. Let's see if this works. It's not bad. It's not bad. It kind of lets me know that I want to do more of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see?
This is the uh, correct Legree red. All right, okay, so that goes right. I need. All right, well, I have cracked the aesthetic problem in my head of how to make my cyclotron compelling and feel like it's a real thing. Uh, and it involves winding a whole bunch of uh, motor wire coils that will, you'll get to see it. It's not gonna be at the end of this video, but it'll be in another one. Everything else about this proton pack is the proton pack of my dreams. Uh, it is mostly aluminum and high quality fiberglass. Most of the parts are real parts. The weathering I couldn't be happier with. I, I uh, first of all, a thank you to Sony for letting me do this and Jason Reitman for everything and specifically to Ben Eady from production for his incredible guidance, support and electronics expertise. It is really fun building stuff with that dude. Uh, I am in particular ecstatic about my antenna up here. I feel like that is a really nifty solution. Um, the next time you see this pack, it will be complete and it will be in New York where I'll get to show it to Jason and hopefully some of the actual Ghostbusters Afterlife cast. I can't even believe I said that sentence. All right, I'm gonna keep going, but uh, you'll get to see the finished pack in another video. Thank you guys for joining me. Oh, oh, before we go, I would be remiss if I did not, did not tell you that Sony, in letting me do research on this, provided me an audience with an actual screen used hero Ghostbusters Afterlife proton pack. And it was an education. It's a beautiful piece. I took tons of photos with my phone. And incredibly, Sony is allowing us to post the gallery of the photos that I took. So this is the kind of reference I take when I wanna know all about a specific prop. And one of the axioms is no matter how many photos you take, there's always something you didn't get enough coverage of. I'm not sure what that is yet, but I will find out. Uh, if you are a trooper, hopefully this will answer all of the questions you have about the afterlife packs. Uh, and to you, I would also say you're welcome.